Hi, I'm Micah Burke, and for over 20 years, I've been a creative director at a Northern California sleep products retailer. My passion, however, is in compositing, landscape photography, and in taking pictures of my cat, Miss Scraggles. Generally, however, I just love learning new things. In my day job, I'm a mild-mannered creative director. You might know me from such hits as 72-hour flash sale, save up to $1,000, and of course, free adjustable mattress base. Well, you know, these are the things you get in your mailbox and you throw away, or that you block online. As I said, my passion is in compositing. I've attended the Adobe Max conference for many years, and specifically the Russell Brown at Max classes. Russell Brown's the senior creative director at Adobe, and he hosts the pre-conference class every year. I've made many composites and posters in his classes, and this year I was graciously asked to teach at his class and to make some specific posters for the class beforehand. I wasn't sure what I was going to teach on. However, the other speakers had most of the basics and advanced aspects of compositing covered. Lisa Carney, Jesus Ramirez, Julian Koss, these other amazing speakers were going to cover everything that I might teach. I realized, however, that in making posters to advertise the class, I was using AI to create the backgrounds and foregrounds. It dawned on me exactly what my topic was going to be. In creating my posters, I needed specific backgrounds and objects that I couldn't find on Adobe Stock. So instead, I used AI to create these objects and to composite them into the posters. So where did I get these cool images? Most of us use AI, whether we know it or not. Photoshop uses AI for object selection, sky selection, content-aware fill, and neural filters. Other applications like Topaz Gigapixel and Sharpen AI use AI to add pixels that don't exist. I first started playing with AI image generation during the pandemic, utilizing an app called Wombo Dream. Uh, this app is still available for iOS and Android. Here is a series of images I created in Wombo Dream using the prompt Dancing Dervish Rainbow. I used various Wombo Dream styles to create these images. Wombo Dream images are artistic in and of themselves, but they really weren't generally usable for compositing. I read then about an NVIDIA project called Galgan. Galgan 2 website and the NVIDIA Canvas Windows application create photorealistic landscape images. While the image size is limited to 1024 by 1024, these were very usable with some upscaling. Then, earlier this year, Mid Journey and Dolly opened for beta testing. This, of course, is in the year 2022. Mid Journey and Dolly provided immediately accessible images through text prompts and general artistic images that could be used in compositing, mood boards, or idea generation. Mid Journey used a proprietary method to generate images, while Galgan and Canvas were using GAN method, and Dolly uses the clip method. I'll tell you more about these later. Then, in late August, Stable Diffusion Model 1.4 was released. Midjourney quickly incorporated this model into its system and began to generate amazing photorealistic images. Stable Diffusion is a deep learning model of AI that uses an image set of nearly 6 billion tagged images. This provides a backbone for the image generation built into Stable Diffusion. Stability AI is the London-based artificial intelligence-focused company that created Stable Diffusion. It recently raised over 100 million in VC funds. For now, Stable Diffusion's source code is available, along with its pre-trained weights. Its license prohibits certain kinds of images, specifically illegal things, but its images are free to use commercially. Stable Diffusion is also available to run locally on a computer equipped with a proper video card, utilizing Python on the system. But just so you understand, within a few months, AI went from generating quirky, often blocky, and yet artistic images to generating photorealistic imagery. Here is a series of images I created I call Real Heroes, using detailed prompts including the terms G.I. Joe action figure in the prompt. I generated images of children of different ethnicities, as well as late night talk show hosts as examples. Let me give you an extremely simplified explanation of how some of the more common AI models work. In a GAN, which is a generative adversarial network, millions of images are thrown at an AI, and we tell it what they are with tagging. For example, cats. 
two different versions of the AI will now battle it out for which produces the image closest to our term. The winning system will go on to compete, on and on, and this will produce really good results. However, it will often get details like human hands with too many fingers and some other problematic issues wrong. While GAN can produce similar results over and over, it won't diversify much. It's also subject to corruption if the wrong images are tagged. DALI uses the CLIP method, specifically the UNCLIP method, but the same concepts are behind each. A clip method starts with 400 million images and text pairs. For example, we have cats and we have skateboards. These pairs are then able to produce similar images. The images are put through a diffusion sampler, more on this in a moment, and the model is able to generate images that are not directly in the database. For example, cat on a skateboard. The diffusion method, we start with billions of tagged images. In this case, once again, here are our cats. But in this case, we will then add Gaussian noise to the image until it's unrecognizable. The AI is then trained how to reverse that process, generating completely new, unique images. Like a painter creating a new work in the style of other painters, the AI is creating a wholly new image based on the concepts it's learned from the input photos. It is not creating an image made up of these other photos. This is not a composite. This is a wholly new image. This is the diffusion method in action, and these different models have advantages and disadvantages. However, diffusion provides both photorealistic images and artistic images as needed. Within the diffusion method, there are variations in the sampling method. However, those are beyond the scope of this discussion. With this admittedly simplistic and probably flawed explanation of generation methods, let's discuss some of the current processes for generating images through artificial intelligence. Text to image is where we take a text prompt and generate an image based on that text prompt. In image to image, we will take an existing image via upload or URL and provide a prompt text for the new image, then build a new image using those references. The closest to the original output can be guided. In painting is where we take an existing image, we mask a selection, and we fix the image or add new content to the image. This is similar to Content Aware Fill in Photoshop, except it's much more powerful. It's able to add objects to the images. Alt painting is another Content Aware Fill like process where it can expand the boundaries of an image adding details and objects where none existed before. Text-to-image is the most familiar AI imaging process. Using text-to-image prompt provided by a user, the AI will generate an image. In this example, the prompt is a high-resolution cyberpunk woman portrait neon lighting depth of field. Our result, using mid-journey in this case, is a highly detailed portrait of a cyberpunk woman. Adding a few additional ideas to the prompts will change the image completely. Here, our new prompt is high resolution cyberpunk woman portrait, neon lighting, depth of field, atmospheric by Albert Bierstadt. We can also remove prompts and add others, providing us yet a completely different portrait, also completely original. Here's our example of a painting of a high resolution cyberpunk woman portrait, depth of field, atmospheric by Titian. Here's an example of text to image rendering in Midjourney. Midjourney uses Discord chat application to interact with the system. You can query the Midjourney bot and get your images back through this application. You see the lines of code there generate specific styles of imagery. In this case, I wanted images that were of a certain aspect ratio and using the version three of the software. At the end of the image generation phase, you can choose to get variations of your image. You can even upscale the image using that very same technology. Each of the different AI platforms provide different results and use different prompt options. I'll provide resources at the end of this presentation to help you generate your own prompts. Prompt crafting is a sort of arcane magic. Here's how various platforms will imagine each of these prompts. For example, high quality photo of a chimpanzee wearing a spacesuit. As you can see, we've got three very distinct images. 
but very usable. Here's another example of a high-resolution cyberpunk woman portrait neon lighting depth of field. You can use entire sentences and concepts within prompts. Here is, there is another world very close to ours that we do not perceive directly, but they do interact sometimes, painting by Thomas Cole. As you can see, we can use sentences, concepts, different kinds of lighting, focal links, artist names, genre labels. All of these things can be used for prompt making. One very important aspect of prompt writing is adding details. Every term you give the prompt will change the image. Prompt effects. Here are some examples. Realistic, detailed, ruggedly handsome Viking warrior. Using the same seed number, we can get different results from the same image. But in this case, I'm going to try different prompt effects. Here I'm using artist terms. Here's a realistically detailed, ruggedly handsome Viking warrior by Greg Hildebrand. Likewise, the same image by Ralph McQuarrie. And again, Audrey Kawasaki. Notice these are distinctly different images with distinct styles, and yet none of these images ever existed before. We can also use photography and render terms, such as focal links, lighting, and render methods. The next method we'll study is called image to image. This is where we take an existing image as part of your prompt, add text, and generate an image similar to your existing one. We can do this to generate the same image in a different format or in a different style. Here, for example, I've taken the Northman poster and used it as the prompt, and I added the text, epic photograph of a Viking warrior standing on a rock and next to the stormy ocean. Sometimes this is done by adding URL to the image prompt, or a specific seed number, which is a reference to the image. As you can see, it's generated a completely new and yet somewhat similar image. Here's a drastic example of image to image. A terrible landscape image quickly generated in Photoshop was then sent to the local stable diffusion installation. I told it then to generate it by Maxfield Parrish, by Ferdinand Ladera, by George Innes, and also just as a photograph. You can see we have four distinctly different images. Another form of image to image can be seen using the NVIDIA app Canvas and the associated web app Galgan 2. Here's my image, which is a basic simple drawing in the Galgan or Canvas application. The software provides labels for each of the colors, and in this case, the dull green is the mountain, green is the trees, teal is sky, and brown is rock. Canvas then will generate images based on these image prompts that we give it. I can add text or even my own styles to the image platform. Nearly infinite variations can be generated. As you can add text prompts to these other images, you can see that you can get many variations. Canvas will output these images at 1024 by 1024, but you can then upscale these images with Topaz or some other product, and they will come out very well. Let me show you how this works. NVIDIA Canvas works similar to Photoshop with layers and paint. You can choose a medium, in this case landscape types, and paint it directly onto the canvas. Here I'm painting an ocean. And then I'm going to add some rocks into the ocean on another layer. I'm then going to add some sand under the rock and then additional rocks under those to give this appearance of a rock standing on a sandy beach. As you can see, you can add alternative looks. You can even add your own by uploading images that you already own. Now I'm going to paint some more rocks. This is a very photorealistic image, and again, I can still make variations. I can save this image here and its associated generated image and reuse it over and over again. Inpainting is another method. Rather than just generating content based on surrounding data, inpainting will take the text content and the prompt into account when building the image. 
You can add objects to the existing image rather than just fixing issues. This is an example like Content-Aware Fill on Photoshop, but you will see it's much more powerful. In this case, I generated this image in an old version of Mid-Journey. You can see our Viking warrior here has a strange flesh-shaped helmet, and his left side of his face is kind of messed up. I'd like to fix this, so I'm going to mask this using Dolly and ask Dolly to create my new Viking. It's created a distinctive metal helmet, and it's actually fixed his face for me. Similarly, we can take existing photographs and add objects to them that weren't present in the original image. Here's a photo of Russell Brown, and he really needs to wear mirror shades. Again, I take the photo into Dolly, mask out the area, and generate the mirror shades. Here's an example of inpainting with Dolly, and Dolly seems to excel at inpainting and outpainting. Here's a pirate image that I created. Now I want to add a parrot to his shoulder. First, I will mask or erase the area where I want the parrot, and then I will tell Dolly to generate the parrot. I've sped up the process for the purpose of the video, but you'll see how it works. Dolly will generate a parrot on his shoulder. We can then select which parrot we want him to have. I think I like this parrot here, and I'll accept this one. If we don't like that, we can always cancel it and redo it, or we can accept the prompt and then export the image. Outpainting is where we take an existing image and extend the boundaries of that image. Again, this is using an image and a text prompt. In this case, we have the American Gothic painting by Grant Wood. I took this into Dali and just expanded the edges. We can now see what else is going on on this lovely farm. All this took was a text prompt and the image. There is no actual Photoshop or other painting required. Often we're given images that are cropped, and we'd like to see portions of those images that were cropped. Often the photographer just didn't shoot them. Well, we can take our original image into Dolly or another system that allows outpainting and generate the missing details. For example, this image of Brian Cranston as a Viking king was generated in Mid Journey, and I've added additional details in Dolly. We're not stuck with the results that Dolly generates. We have different versions to choose from. Imagine how useful this would be for extending an image for a tall or wide banner. Here I have a relatively low resolution image of a knight. I can place the image in the Dolly and give it a prompt. Again, Dolly will generate the surrounding information from the image and from our text prompt. I'm able to choose from the different styles of image that Dolly gives me. I kind of like this one. That's a pretty neat looking image. I think I'll just go back and keep this one. Text to image, outpainting, and inpainting can be used together. Here's a completely original image created from a prompt, a photo of a handsome Viking warrior with depth of field and cinematic lighting. As you can see, he's a pretty cool looking dude with horns and that sort of thing going on, but I want to edit this in Dali and extend the boundary so that we have more of him to use in our imagery. Notice the impressive depth of field that Dali added to this image. There's other aspects to AI image generation to explore. Recently, added to most of the platforms is the ability to create seamlessly tiled images. For example, this is a leaf shape on a yellow background. I added the tile prompt to Mid Journey and created this pattern. Taking the resulting pattern into Photoshop, I used to fill the entire screen. Upscaling. The same AI generative methods can be used to take an existing image and upscale it with highly accurate results. Here's an image of an F-18 that I took during a recent air show. This image is only 42 kilobytes. I then took it into Stable Diffusion and upscaled it to 2.23 megabytes. And you can see it's a very nicely detailed image. 
Before we discuss where to get this software, there's three more vocabulary words you're going to need to know. Firstly is seed. Seed is a term that refers to the unique identifying number generated by whichever system you're using to generate the image. For stable diffusion, it will be seed, but for mid-journey, the term is job ID. This will differ from system to system. Steps. Steps refers to the number of times an image is refined by the system. Each model has its own best use guide to the number of steps for each refinement. I'll provide some simple references at the end. Config scale. Config scale refers to how close your image will conform to your text and image prompt. The higher the number, the more closely the result will resemble exactly what you described or the image that you provided as a basis for your image. This way we can generate similar images or images using the same model and subject. How do we get this magic? Well, there's two basic ways and lots of options. Firstly, you can have a local install, which means if you have the required hardware, you can install Python language on your personal computer, pick one of the multitude of GitHub versions of Stable Diffusion, and go. While many of these include GUIs to make it easier, they often require text command line interface. A new version of Stable Diffusion has recently been released, which will make this easier to install. There are downloadable applications, web apps, and mobile apps, as well as Google Colab notebooks that will allow you to generate these images. I'm going to explore those options here. One caveat. Currently, to install the software locally, you must have an NVIDIA RTX 2000 series GPU or better. This will include their desktop gaming and studio GPUs. Or an M1 or M2 hardware on a Macintosh. Not all products will work with M2 or M1 hardware. And by the way, currently AMD GPUs are not supported. You can still use Midjourney and the other web-based apps, even if you have non-compliant PC or Macintosh. Midjourney. One of the easiest, in my opinion, best options is Midjourney. Midjourney is currently based on a chat application called Discord, and you can query a chatbot, it'll produce the images for you. It's got some of the best image quality currently, in my opinion. It's very easy to use. It has a freemium model with subscriptions available. I'm currently on the $30 a month unlimited subscription model, which allows me to create as many images as I want with some caveats. The features are fantastic. It also allows you to upscale and remix the images as you need. Midjourney also includes seamless tiling. Some of the cons are is that the output is censored. So you cannot create not safe for work images or images with certain kinds of political content. For example, you cannot create images of Jinping. The initial output for the images is low res. However, you can upscale them quickly. There is no real image to image yet available in Midjourney. Next is Dali. Dolly produces good results, but it excels more in inpainting and outpainting. It's easy to use, it's web-based, and you'll get 15 credits a month to use the service, but you can buy additional credits. The inpainting and outpainting is amazing, and this freemium model allows you to generate images quickly. I'm not thrilled with the basic results I can get from the text to image with Dolly, but the other features are outstanding. Again, the cons are censored output, render quality lacking, and low resolution initial output. Next is Dream Studio. Dream Studio is Stability AI's web-based interface for Stable Diffusion. It's extremely easy to use, and the GUI is very straightforward. It also operates on a freemium model, and outpainting and inpainting has just been added. As far as cons go, the output is also censored, and the render output can sometimes be lacking. Recently, there have been two Stable Diffusion plugins introduced for Photoshop. First I want to discuss is created by a company called Flying Dog. It is a Photoshop plugin, which is a pro. However, installation and configuration can be somewhat difficult. It has inpainting and outpainting. It allows you to do a local install of Stable Diffusion and access that. And it has also the ability to connect this to a Dream Studio account. This means the plugin will be using Dream Studio credits when you use it.
The one caveat here is that it is expensive. However, you will get 50% off if you use the code FLYINGDOG50 for a limited time. Another Photoshop plugin that has become recently available was created by Christian Cantrell. He was recently hired by Stability AI after this plugin was released. This is a free plugin and offers access to Stable Diffusion both through Dream Studio account and local inference. Support for Macintosh's M1 metal architecture for local inference has been demonstrated. However, I am unable to confirm that the current version on Adobe Exchange will work with it yet. Moving on to the medium difficulty is the Colab Notebooks. Colab Notebooks are web-based systems that will execute Python programming applications. You don't have to have an NVIDIA GPU, but you do have to have a Google Drive account. These will use Google-based CPUs and GPUs rather than your own local resources. These may require a Hugging Face account, which is a way to access the Stable Diffusion model set. These used to be free, but as popularity grew, Google has put a cap on the amount of usage per month per IP or user. One of the best aspects to Colab Notebooks are the many variations of Stable Diffusion flavors available, from the standard version to versions specifically for making Japanese anime-style images, and also notebooks that can generate frame-by-frame -frame animations based on your text prompts. A recently designed notebook can even create VR-like panoramic images. The results from using these notebooks are about as good as what you'll get from a local inference. Plus, you'll not be bogging down your own system's resources. On the con side, the interfaces for Colab notebooks are often complex and sometimes display the Python code running in them. Occasionally, these notebooks can be unstable and, as stated, they require a Google account, both for storage and payment of the GPU time. Thus, your output and usage will be monitored by Google. NVIDIA Canvas is a Windows-specific desktop application requiring an NVIDIA RTX GPU. Galgan 2 is the web version of the same software, and it is platform agnostic. Focused specifically on landscape images, these use the older GAN method. However, the 1024 by 1024 pixel results are still excellent for the genre. There is a 360 degree web version now available, which will create panoramic images. The web version is sometimes unstable. You can also install Stable Diffusion on your local computer. On a site called GitHub, you can download many different versions of Stable Diffusion. Most of these versions include image to image, upscaling, and other extras. There's usually no charges for this, and you can even do output of video frame to frame. There are uncensored versions available, even though the Stable Diffusion doesn't necessarily want them used for this. Most of these local installs do require a powerful NVIDIA RTX GPU, though there are M1-enabled versions now available. These can be extremely complex to install and may require knowledge of command line interfaces and the Python language. Current limitations. As it's always been said, there's no such thing as a free lunch. A powerful GPU is required for local install even for small, low-resolution images. It can be costly. Each one of these products may require a subscription. It can be slow. Some of these apps have lengthy wait times and processing times. If you install it on your own personal computer and you have a low-end video card, your GPU will provide the speed, while the VRAM will control the size of the image. If you have a low-end GPU, you can only do certain images at a certain speed, and if you only have 4 to 8 gigs of VRAM, you're going to only be able to produce 512 by 512 images. This can be frustrating, of course, and generating just the right prompt is an art unto itself. Getting the right output will take a lot of patience. Low resolution. Yes, most of the output is low resolution and will need upscaling. This will obviously get better as time progresses. So what's next? In just six months since Stable Diffusion was released, we've gone from quirky art to photorealistic rendering. The future will be nothing less than amazing. Right now, you can generate video using the same Stable Diffusion method with text prompts, seeds, and config scales. You can customize morph-like animation from one prompt to another. EBSynth is a tool from a company called Secret Weapons. It can transform existing video, painting over it with other images. 
This can be combined with AI-generated images to create realistic rotoscope-like effects. The same AI methods used to render 2D images can be used to render all sides of an object, creating realistic 3D objects and eventually tool paths for 3D printing. Another recent advancement is the ability for the AI to determine the probable geometry of a person from a single photograph. This can be used to simulate the 3D contours of an individual just from the one photo. The same diffusion method can generate vector points for objects in 3D space. This will eventually produce realistic 3D objects from images in the AI database. For a moment, let's consider the impact of artificial intelligence image creation and the society at large. Copyright is a big issue right now. The question of copyright comes up often, but the AI is generating wholly new images based on a text prompt. Copyrights do not apply. Consider the recent case of the monkey taking a photo. The monkey would own the copyright of the image. Can an AI own a copyright? That said, personality and IP rights will still apply. You cannot expect to produce images with logos or known people in them and not have to grapple with the legalities. At the recent Colorado State Fair, an image created by Midjourney was entered into an art competition and won the Blue Ribbon. This image, created by Jason Allen through a Midjourney text prompt, won the ribbon much to the anger of fellow competitors and artists. Greg Rukowski is a fantasy concept artist, and he's become one of the most commonly used terms in prompt creation in AI artwork. He wants living artists excluded from AI datasets, and other artists are considering suing for the inclusion of their work in these datasets. Getty, Shutterstock, and other stock photo sites have announced that they're going to reject AI image submissions. Here's a list of resources and people to follow. NVIDIA Canvas is the GAN-based AI image creator for creating landscape images. There is also a 360-degree panoramic version available. Midjourney is, in my opinion, currently the premier AI image creation application. This link will provide you with registration and installation assistance. DALL-E2 is the unclip-based AI image generator with excellent outpainting and inpainting options. Dream Studio is the web-based inference of Stability AI's Stable Diffusion system. The Stable Diffusion plugin by Christian Cantrell is available now on Adobe Exchange. The Flying Dog plugin also is available on Adobe Exchange, and both of these plugins offer most of the same features, though Flying Dog has more capability currently. Be sure to use the code FLYINGDOG50 to get 50% off this plugin. Here's additional resources, websites, and people to follow. Mage.space is a new, uncensored, stable diffusion web inference. It's currently offering text-to-image and image-to-image -image capability. Get Image AI is a new AI site with basic inpainting and outpainting ability provided by Stable Diffusion. It is credit-based. Scott Detweiler is a photographer, body painter, 3D artist, and artificial intelligence enthusiast. His YouTube channel is filled with tutorials and studies relating to best practices in AI image generation and compositing. Lexica Art is an amazing site of compiled AI images along with their associated prompts and seed numbers. Using this resource, you can make variations on others' prompts and learn how to best craft your own text prompts. The Stable Diffusion Config Study is a Google spreadsheet documenting the differences in the config level on image output. The Stable Diffusion Artist Reference is an updated guide to artists in the Stable Diffusion database and how using their names and prompts will affect your images. This is also a Google spreadsheet. Scott Detweiler has a study on the different samplers available in Stable Diffusion. Different samplers are available within the interface and they can change your image output dramatically. I highly recommend Scott's resources. 